The beastry entry for the creeper is manipulated through the hive mind of the crimson. Creepers serve as the brain's eyes and orbit around it for defense in numbers. This means that the brain would be blind without its creepers, and I guess that's why it has an eye on its heart in the second phase. The console exclusive Tone Bogiri inflicts poison despite being coated in venom. If you are aware, there's a distinction between the two both in game and in real life. Most rainbow weapons in the game change colors based on secret beta tester names, such as the Last Prism and the Night Glow. An exception is the Kaleidoscope, which doesn't actually change. Coins ascend in size when they're dropped on the ground, but they don't change when they're fired out of a coin gun. The Big Granada's tooltip is beat the shindig out of it. Apparently, a shindig is a social gathering with dancing, according to Merriam-Webster. There are three guitars in Terraria, the Rain Song, Ivy, and Stellar Tune. Only one of them does damage. The Cobalt Armor is a feudal Japanese theme, showing most of the hat, naginata, spear, and sword based heavily on the katana. Meanwhile, Palladium is a feudal European theme shown in the spear and headdress. The contents of a geode can be worth up to 12 gold of perfect RNG, which is 240 times the standard sell price of just 5 silver. Intriguingly, the Mace Hell Armored Bones is more defense than the Spike Shield Held Armored Bones, despite the shield one having, you know, a shield. All drills have no knockback, except the Chlorophyte Drill, Drax, and Laser Drill. So, if you were crazy, Drax could actually be used as a weapon. Crystal Assassin Hood shares the Kabuto scene on the Orichalcum headgear. The Mysterious Tablet has 400 HP and uses the same AI as the Lunatic Devotee, which is basically no AI. In 1.3, Santa got a bag to carry his presents. White Thread replaces Green Thread in the Japanese release of Terraria, creating an interesting conundrum when Green Stucco is crafted with White Thread. White Thread itself is also crafted the same as Purple Thread, not Green Thread. There are two princess sets in the game, with one coming from the Clothier and one from Goodie Bags. They look completely different, with one being based on Zelda, one based on nothing, and both having no similarities to the princess NBC. To make it more confusing, the chest pieces are both also referred to as princess dress. The Dry Disc Painting is a parody of Grande Odalisque, an 1814 painting. At least the pixelated version is more PG. Despite being an obvious reference to Bruce Lee, the Bone Lee Beastry entry is nothing to say about Bruce Lee. Of course, this is staying in universe. Iker is pronounced Icor, but it is also incorrectly pronounced Iker by many, including me when I first played the game. The game knows this, and the Iker Sticker mob has this erroneous but understandable rhyme in its name. There are three pets in the game which are saplings. The Pet Sapling, the Cursed Sapling, and the Everscream Sapling. Who knew there were that many deadly trees in this game? King Slime Summon, the Slime Crown, was given a lot more contrast in 1.3.1. There are six different sprites used by the Blood Thorn weapon, which can range from a single spike to this bolt thing. Talk about ouch. The Goblin Peon's ear got less curvy in 1.4, and its shirt became more tattered. I guess that's what happens when the game describes you as little more than cannon fodder, and I guess that's what a peon is after all. The revolver's gun handle is white, which means it could be a grip made of ivory, given that most revolvers are quite old. Despite the chain gun being a famously inaccurate gun, it doesn't say it's inaccurate, unlike the Gatligator. Shroomite helmets resemble various gear. The helmet resembles a gas mask, the headgear seems like a helmet with a radio earpiece, and the mask resembles a visor or mask with night vision goggles. Wisp Die has two other variants, the Infernal Wisp and Unicorn Wisp Dies. Two of the Blue Armored Bones variants are actually unarmed, while the other variants all have weapons of some kind. The Turtle Scale Male shows a distinct shell on its back end, while the Beetle Scale Male loses the shell to differentiate it from the Beetle Shell. Sakura Trees, despite being cherry blossoms, don't drop cherries. The Morning Star Whip can drop from all types of armored bones, but only one variant of Rusty Armored Bones actually carries a whip or mace-like object. The Granite Golem is internally referred to with the portmanteau Grolem, as well as Grelemental for Granite Elemental. Water gets darker as you go deeper into the earth, going from pure blue to this purple color. Before 1.3.1, the Kimono Leg Sprite used to be swapped between male and female. The Jellyfish Diving Gear and its upgrade the Arctic Diving Gear have their snorkels on the opposing side of each other. You may notice that only some sinks come with plumbing outside of the main stock, while most keep it nice and clean. Sometimes, though, they do seem to cover up with a square cupboard. The Vortex Beater plays the shot sound twice whenever it shoots, and combined with the fact that its shot sound is obnoxiously loud, makes it one of the most annoying weapons in the game. Maybe it's up there with the Stellar Tune. The Heart Lantern is the only lantern in the game not to contain any source of light. After all, torches, fallen stars, and souls are all capable of lighting themselves. The Life Crystal can't. Not one toilet in Terraria is made of a block that is pleasant to sit on. I imagine sitting on rock, metal, slime, ice, flesh, obsidian, brick, cactus, or honey isn't too pleasant. 
I can't imagine the sensation of sitting on a slab of honey, slime, or rotting flesh and I'm just trying to relieve my diarrhea. If I had to, the glass toilet, the terror toilet, or the Martian toilet would be most comfortable in my opinion. As mentioned in a previous video, the Soul of Fright is unique in having four parts instead of two. This is shown in the Soul of Fright in a Bottle Sprite, with these little pixels. The Charge Blaster Cannon possibly has the smallest sprite of any terraria weapon, with the sprite just being 9x7 pixels across. A bitmap 9x7 color 24-bit image is only 189 bytes in size. All potions in Terraria now feature a distinctive silver cap on the top of their sprites. This was introduced in 1.3, and all potions before this were typically uncapped in a shaped flask. They were also not filled to the brim with liquid, unlike the potions of today. Grandfather clocks always read either 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock depending on the clock, and these never change when placed. The exceptions are the pillar clocks, which don't have a face on them at all. Another interesting fact about watches is that every one of them shows 9 o'clock, except the copper and tin watches. They are unique because they only have one hand and are pointed toward 10 o'clock. This could be to show their inferior accuracy only to the hour, but the pre-1.3.1 sprites actually have two hands, which are pointing toward 9.10 or 2.45. Only the cobalt and mithril drill show two lights on the side of the drill. All other drills have a single unit body with no lights. Apparently, the crystal shard used to look like this. Ancient hollowed armor sprite appears to only cover the breasts on the female version. If you look really closely, the moon is tilted to when it rises and sets. The wolf sprite from 1.3 seems to have blood around its mouth, which was removed in 1.4. The beastry entry for fairies refers to them as humanoid. Yeah, no. In your Terraria directory within Steam apps, you can find the Terraria changelog text file. Last time I took a look at this last June, it was 1.4.2.3. It had a size of 394,908 bytes, and would take 5 hours and 51 minutes to read out loud, according to wordcounter.net. Now in 1.4.3.6, it has a size of 410,233 bytes, and a read time of 6 hours and 5 minutes. Terraria's assets are stored in XMB files like this, and there are a lot of them. Terraria's player files are encrypted with a key, which is, hey guys, spelled like this. This serves no purpose at all, since it's not like Terraria is trying to DRM their player files, it's not a competitive game after all. Rita is just having some fun. Dryad's Blessing summons two leaf bearers of ten leaves each, spaced equidistantly. In the Prismatic Bolts 2 sound effect for the Empress of Light, you can hear the sound wash over you from left to right. In the Google Trends graph for Terraria, you can clearly see when each update came out. There are smaller upticks, of course, and right now we seem to be on the one due to the seemingly imminent release of 1.4.4. Critical hits and damage weren't added until 1.0.6. And finally, this. I don't know if it'll be fixed, but that's the kimono on a chair for you. <laughs>